Hello, guys. See, I thought it would be kind of fun to go back in history in an old video. I popped into this thing the other day. It's on RSO TV. We put it out, gosh, I don't know, seven, maybe eight years ago. Might even be as long as 10. It started to get all a little bit fuzzy. But it is pretty interesting in that it is one of the few, if not the only one I've ever done on a double barrel rifle. Dangerous game rifle, classic stuff. I came across one that was less expensive than most. And one of the reasons that they're not all that popular in this country is because they are such an expensive item. Think of a fine side-by-side -side shotgun. Uh, it's similar, even more expensive because they have to regulate the barrels to get them to shoot roughly to the same place. You can imagine if you have two barrels side by side, you can not get them to hit to the same point of aim. And then if you've got a, a barrel that groups one or two inches, suddenly you have two of them and then they're together and they're influencing each other's vibrations and then it makes it complicated. So they have to put a lot of time and effort into getting these things to shoot roughly to the same point of aim. And that, of course, is at one point down range because they're kind of crossed like this. So you're never going to get the kind of accuracy with, with a, a single barrel rifle. But they are fun. And of course, they're extremely popular for dangerous game because there's two quick shots and they handle like a shotgun just whoosh, bam that you just almost don't have to aim really you just get it to fit you like a shotgun does and it pretty much hits where you're looking and when you're looking at a big animal like a uh, cape buffalo you don't have to have prairie dog accuracy out of that rifle and this one was relatively inexpensive um sabati uh builds them and they're imported into this country by the Italian firearms group down in Texas. And they invited me down to look at several of their rifles and I was really interested in this one. So we filmed it on a Texas ranch where they have the exotics and they were hunting. There was someone there hunting a uh, buffalo, water buffalo. This is the, the buffalo that's from Asia, not Africa. It's not the Cape buffalo, different species. Um, but they're actually a little bit bigger than a Cape Buffalo. So it's a pretty good sized animal. And Larry Pancake was the hunter. And uh, he, he was, uh, he had to give it two shots. You know, the first shot, you think, man, a big 470 Nitro Express 500 grain bullet, I think he was shooting in, it would, would drop them. But, you know, the reputation of Cape Buffalo, they can really absorb some energy and some big bullets. And that was the case with this. He hit it the first time it ran off in, in the bushes and he eased up to it and finished it off. But the uh, video, well, let's just see what I all did. I remember taking this gun down and really getting into the guts of it and how it all worked and everything. So let's just watch it. First off, I've just got a yeah, that's a different intro we had back then. I really like that one. I almost ought to bring that back. I like the frogs on that part. You know, one of the more uncommon rifles in North American hunting fields is the double barrel. Whether a stacked over under or a side by side, you just rarely see those. Yet it's a strong, reliable, proven action used around the world. Why not here? Let's dig deeper into the side by side double rifle, see what makes it tick, and see if you might just be interested in getting one for yourself. Traditionally, double rifles have been expensive and rather ornate with fancy walnut yeah, I remember stocks, doing this. To get this rotating gunshot is a little bit tricky if you don't have motorized equipment. We were doing all of this by hand in a garage. So we've got the light behind me coming through the big garage door and then way in the background is black <clears throat> because of the shadow in there. And then I had Larry turn by holding the muzzles obviously an unloaded gun, and turn the muzzle like this to try to make it a smooth transition as we brought that rifle around. When you start filming guns like this, you realize that those who do it professionally really have some special tools with which to make it work because getting smooth movements is not easy. Fancy walnut stocks, elaborate scroll engraving, and etched game scenes. Well, this Sabati Big 5 EDL Classic Safari Rifle is no exception except for its price. 
While many doubles start at $17,000 for an unadorned base model, this box lock double with decorative side plates sells for a manufacturer's suggested retail price of just $7,819. Yeah, that was then. <laughs> this is now. I would imagine that thing would be closer to probably 10000 I don't know. You might want to look it up, but it is, or at least was, and I imagine it still is, one of the the better quality side-by-side -side doubles at a low price, the lowest price I've ever seen on one. And it's not a clunky, cheap uh, imitation. It's the genuine item. That's a pretty good buy. Double rifles evolved from huge double-barrel shotguns in the late 19th century to provide... Hey, you might recognize this gentleman, Theodore Roosevelt. And he has got a double rifle there. Obviously, it wasn't the Sabati. Um, and I believe he was shooting a 500 Nitro Express. I'd have to look that up. He may have been using the 4, 470 Nitro, but I think it was the 500. To provide a quick insurance shot when hunting dangerous game. If the first shot didn't anchor the beast, the second was supposed to. Of course, you still had to put the bullet in the right spot. In addition to the fastest follow-up shot in the business, side-by-side -side doubles provide another level of insurance. Redundancy. Because this Sabati has two barrels and two independent mechanical firing mechanisms, you're effectively carrying two rifles in one. Now, that is an important point. And it's another reason that the professional hunters in Africa like side-by-side -side doubles. Two triggers, two barrels. If something fails on one, you've got a complete setup for the next shot. Uh, whereas with the bolt action rifle, if it jams up on you or somehow fails, the trigger breaks or whatever, that's it. <laughs> you better hope that that animal uh, doesn't reach you or you get out of the way because you've got no backup. This is really a nice system for that. If one side fails to fire for any reason, like you forgot to load it, while the other remains oh, fully Oh, functional. I need to make a comment here on these uh, trigger fingers. That finger on the back trigger first. This is kind of a standard with double barrels. You should always fire the rear first. That avoids doubling. If you pull the front first and the rear is still cocked, you could come back far enough or slip your finger off the front trigger and hit the back one and get a bam-bam a double, which is a little bit painful. <laughs> Especially if you don't have articulated triggers, which this one doesn't. One of the reasons it's lesser priced is it does not have articulated triggers. And I'm pretty sure I address that further along here. Because this double simply hinges open to load, it can accommodate extremely long cartridges like the 470 Nitro Express, which is nearly four inches long. Ejecting empties is dead simple. Just break the action open and the selective auto ejectors kick out any fired cases. The unfired rounds stay in their chambers. Because there is no bolt behind the breech of this Sabati, overall length is just 41 inches and that's with 24 inch barrels. The rifle is short and quick to maneuver in brush and that's another reason doubles are popular for hunting dangerous game in thick cover. The rifle weighs 10 pounds, 11 ounces. Now that weight helps tame the 60 foot pounds of free recoil energy that those 500 grain bullets I, I need to make a comment here. This gentleman, me, <laughs> is uh, about 170 pounds. So if you are one of the folks you think these big kicking re uh, rifles recoil like being kicked by a mule, it's a real common phrase. It's just, man, that thing kicks like a mule. You ever see a video of someone being kicked by a horse or a mule, they literally go flying. I mean, there's a lot more energy in the kick of a mule than even in this 400, 470 with a 500 grain bullet. Um, you can absorb that recoil. It is not that big of a deal. Certainly not as much fun as shooting a 243 or a 22, but it is not kicking like a mule. Thank goodness. Well, I certainly knew I wasn't touching off a 243 here. The recoil really wasn't as bad as I expected. Sabati's hammer-forged chrome molybdenum steel barrels are mated to a massive lump of steel called a monoblock from which hang these dual locking lugs. These thick lugs rotate around the action bar's hinge pin and then down into deep recesses within the equally massive lower action bar. Two internal locking bars activated by the top tang lever slide forward to lock into the notches in the lugs. 
This thick action bar, the monoblock, and the lugs control torque. Those enormous bullets. Notice the rifling on this one. This is something we don't see all that often because our bores are usually so small, 338 or less. And here we've got a big 47. And you can see down that uh, bore to see the rifling twist really plainly. It's kind of fun. Plow into the rifling and twist that barrel violently as they're engraved. The first trigger broke at six and three quarter pounds, the second at seven. Not out of line. For See now, back to the trigger. That was the wrong way to shoot the gun if we were actually shooting. We were just showing how the, the triggers broke here. You don't want to do the front trigger first, always the back. For a hard kicking big bore double. The Big Five Classic Safari doesn't have articulated triggers or interceptor sears to prevent accidental doubling. Two features found on much more expensive doubles. We had no doubling incidents while test firing about 40 rounds. I suspect the heavy trigger pulls contributed to that. Now, 40 rounds, imagine at today's ammo prices shooting 40 rounds of these. You're probably looking at, gosh, five to ten dollars per shot for this big bore stuff. Yeah, <laughs> shooting 40 rounds in those days. The body guarantees Still that pretty these expensive. rifles, regulated at 50 yards, will shoot the traditional three inch minute of grapefruit accuracy that's expected of big bore double rifles. By golly, that was his best group. He's only about an inch, inch and an eighth apart. I don't know if you can see those two holes right there. But that is a good group of the double rifle, and that's what you're looking for. Now, a lot of people commented on this thinking this is a really inaccurate rifle, but you've got to come at it from the perspective of these double rifles. Generally, it's like if you can keep that shot within two inches of your aiming point, that's considered acceptable accuracy in a dangerous game side-by-side -side double. Doesn't look all that great when you're looking at paper if you're used to the kind of accuracy we expect out of uh, target rifles or even varmint rifles and shoot these days, even deer hunting rifles. But that is acceptable, more than acceptable accuracy for a side-by-side. -side. And that's what you're looking for, a well-regulated rifle, both barrels shooting within two or three inches of the same point of aim. Another feature is its takedown. Now, here we got into a little bit of confusion with uh, a YouTube. They have certain policies about sh demonstrating how to modify firearms. And we were afraid that this might get us in trouble. This is not modifying a firearm, obviously. This is how it is designed to be traveled with for perfect safety. You break it down like that, that simply, and there's no chance that it could accidentally fire if even if you were foolish enough to leave a round in the chamber it's just broken down completely wonderfully safe and compact for travel this is the way it's designed to function this is the way you clean it you break it down like this to clean the barrels and the action and just service the entire mechanism so i don't know if we're even going to be allowed to leave it on here this time through we're going to uh, ask YouTube if it's okay and stuff and make sure it does not step on their toes with the different restrictions they have on modifying firearms. But this is no modification whatsoever. Standard function. The Big Five Safari Classic features a solid raised quarter rib with standing rear sight and two flip-up blades for longer ranges. The front sight is a rugged front post on a blade ramp. Now, I would order the standing blade with a shallower V-notch so as not to obscure too much of the target. Engraved cross-hatching on the fully manual tang safety makes it easy to grip and push off, even with sweaty hands. The stock grain on the end of the pistol grip is protected by an attractive steel skeleton frame. A one-inch red rubber decelerator recoil pad has more flex than the hard rubber found on most big bore doubles. 22 line per inch hand checkering on the beaver tail forearm and the pistol grip is fairly sharp with crisp clean borders and no overruns that I could see. The oil finished walnut shines with a deep satin luster. In addition to the 470 Nitro Express that we tested, Sabati's Big 5 EDL Classic Safari rifles are chambered for the 500 Nitro Express, 416 Rigby, 450 Nitro Express, 450 Nitro Express, and the 375 H&H. A dangerous game big bore cartridge is probably more wallop than needed for most North American game. 
But whether you want to stalk big bears, moose, or just feral hogs, a sabati can help you do it in impressive style. Wow, that uh, makes me want to do more gun reviews. You know, I used to do a lot of them, um, but we, we got in a little bit of a bind with some of them because of the detail we were going into, you know, taking things apart and showing how they were built and where the recoil lugs were and how it all tied together with the stock and different things that I think are important to know if you were a serious rifleman. But as I mentioned, sometimes you, you get in trouble with the uh, restrictions on some of these commercial channels like this. We're going to look into that. Um, would you like to see more gun reviews? I've got quite a few we could do. And we could resurrect some more of the old ones like this that we took down temporarily. Um, I, I'm thinking I'm going to dive into this a little bit more. Let me know what you think. And if you'd like, we'll do some more of these gun reviews. And also let us know which rifle, shotguns, handguns you would like to see us review. Because, yeah, that's a, that's a fun part. Yeah, summer is quickly approaching and we can get outside now that the snow is gone and indulge in some gun reviews. So thanks for watching this one, and you might want to check out that big game safari rifle from Sabati if you're at all interested in the traditional side-by-side -side dangerous game rifle.